Okay. All right, our, our first uh, beginning, we have the slide that's gonna show, insert a name here, obviously, because we're talking to many, many people in many different clubs. We didn't put one in. So every time you see that, you can think of Tom's River or think of your own personal club uh, being a member of that particular club. So it would be filling in that particular name. Lion Mahesh, you wanna move that ahead one? The first thing we're gonna be discussing really is who are lions? And that's on our next slide. It takes a second for these things to pop up. Yeah, I'm not muted. Can you see? Uh, can you see uh, the mouth? I can see the the first slide. I don't have the second slide up yet. Who are lions? Oh, um, can anybody see, Anu? Uh, can you see the uh, lions? It's, and it's still on the first screen, Mahesh. Okay. I see the new member orientation slide. Insert club okay. name here. Okay, uh, for some reason it is not sharing properly. Hold on for a second. Sure. While we're waiting for that adjustment, I'll just throw something out. The, the idea of orientation is probably the most important thing that you do when you're getting a new member to come and join your club and you want them to understand what has to happen. If you don't go through an orientation, they come to their first meeting not knowing what to expect. And after they, they get to their first meeting, they leave and they still don't know what to expect. And they have no idea if this is gonna be a fit for them or not, because they don't know down the road what's really all involved. So this kind of a, a program is very important for each of the new Orient Alliance to be oriented so that they have a real good background of what is really going on in Lions. Now, <clears throat> we're up on the slide, so we'll, we'll continue from there. Uh, Lions are, are men and women that are dedicated to service those in the need, whether their own community or around the world. You can see, in, and some of you have been involved with the foundation, so you see that when we do things, we as lions are all banded together because we'd be able to do much more work on a, a lar larger scale around the world or in our community than what our club might be able to do. So when you look at the numbers and it says 1.4 million members, that's really 2.8 million hands working around the world to do things. We're doing it in over 200 countries and in more than 48,000 clubs. That's a lot of work, that's a lot of people, that's a lot of service, and that's a lot of help to the community that helps them to get through every day. And you can see that, especially with the current crisis in the Ukraine, Lions International is working with them and sending over donations to take care of some of the humanitarian needs with the food supplies, medical equipment, and that sort of thing. And they've, they've handled out donations to six different countries so far who are taking in the rest refugees. So we, as part of that 1.4, donate money to the foundation and a lot of things happen, which you can see those results. Uh, I haven't seen the news today. I don't know what progress was really made on any peace talks, but you kind of always hope you can do that. Uh, People, people that are alliance generally have some ability to mitigate or mediate these kind of uh, situations. And I, I can remember many, I've been a lion for 48 years plus, and I can remember a story I heard from one of the lions years ago that some one of the governors was making a trip into Africa. And when they were told that he was coming to do his visit, the tribes that were, fighting with each other decided to have a cease or ceasefire if you want to call it that but they ceased the, the fighting that they were having until the day after that governor had finished his visits around in Africa and went back home so being a lion can be a very powerful thing I wish we could just send in one lion or tell a lion in Ukraine go out and hold up your badge and say okay everybody stop and that would be wonderful but I don't think that's quite the way that the situation is going to go. 
So we'll go on to see what we can actually handle because we can't change that the way it is. Okay, our next slide. Okay, who are lions? Um, lions are everyday people. Some are, are politicians, some are not politicians, some are students, some are grocery workers, some are garbage men, some are lawyers, some are doctors, some are bankers. We take just about everybody that can walk, breathe, and say yes or no to become a lion. And that's because we can use the hands and the service that they can provide. And everybody with any kind of a condition can actually become a lion and donate some part of their being to us as lions to help the community. So they may not, some people with disabilities may not be able to do some of the things that we would think that everybody should be able to do, but they can contribute in many different ways. And whether it's a conversation that they can have with us to tell us how to do something differently. Uh, I, I know when I was the director uh, traveling around and I would go and make conversations and talk with speeches to all the different conventions, you'd always go and at some point in time, you'd be the learner and they'd be the teacher because there was always something that they could share, some idea that you never thought of or you'd never seen or witnessed. So you always had a good give and take. And that's why you want people from all different parts of society to be a part of your individual group. Uh, we have the vision statement. It's to be the global leader in community and humanitarian service. Uh, I think when we get done with the campaign uh, 100 and we've done the $300 million in contributions that we're trying to raise, but also the number of service people, people that we've serviced will be tremendous over the, that same period of time. And we'll, we definitely will be earning that moniker of the largest community humanitarian service organization in the world. Uh, and yeah, there are organizations that are bigger than us, but they're not involved all the way with humanitarian service. So that's why we take that title. Our mission statement is to empower our volunteers to serve their communities, meet humanitarian needs, encourage peace. What could we use that? And promote international understanding through Lions Clubs. I can tell you that uh, as, you, as you go around as a lion, whether it's in the district, or in, within your state and you go and you meet with other people, you always are learning and, and trading information and it all works. Um, we have a motto that's been around for a lot of years. I, I, one of the other sessions, they actually gave us the date. I think it was 1925-ish or so that they came up with the model we serve. And <clears throat> that's very simple. But when someone says, well, what did the lions do to when I'm doing a white cane or something like that. And they say, well, what did the lions do? If I'm with a new lion, the first thing I hear the new lion jump out because they want to say something real quick. We serve is what we do. Well, folks, did that tell them anything? Not really. The idea of saying we serve is very good as our motto, but it doesn't tell people what you actually do. And then you have to explain that you work with the uh, child uh, cancer at this point, that we do the eye screenings around the, the different parts of our country, uh, that we do just about anything that's legal we can do. So if we have a new member who comes up and says, I want to turn around and run a, ref a ref uh, refuge place for people with HIV, a club can actually do that. And we do have some clubs in the United States and other places where the, the whole focus is to take care of people with AIDS to try and beat that particular disease and turn around and help the people have somewhat of a life. Uh, so there, it, it's got to be an explanation of what we do, something that's going to grab them. But if I said to you, we serve, I don't think I grabbed you. If, if I tell you what, that we take care of children and their eyes and we give them operations so they can see, then you start to get a little more empathy for what we do as lions, and maybe you're gonna to wanna to join. Um, our slogan as a lion is actually liberty, intelligence, our nation's safety. That's been expressed uh, since the very beginning. And uh, I have to tell you that um, of late, it has another acronym, the same letters, L-I-O-N-S, but it's uh, loving individuals offering needed services. 
And so that's kind of around probably about uh, 10 or 12 presidents, maybe 13 presidents back with Sid Scrubs was the first time I heard that. Uh, Sid had, had wanted to change the, that information. So when he was visiting with us doing our convention, that's how he expressed the slogan. And it's kind of stuck and a lot of other people are now using it and in other presentations, especially the first two of this type of presentation, both of those presenters use that, that extra words as well. But it's a good way of thinking about what it is because you're not sure about liberty, intelligence, or nation safety. That was from 1917 and everything in the world has changed. So the relation to that and its meaning is a little different for us today. Uh, the purposes, the Lions has more purposes that to tell people why we they should be a lion and why we should exist. Because if it's legal, as I said before, it's something that we can actually do in our club. Uh, we have many, many different things that came up and we've changed our, our focus on a lot of stuff. But one of the things that uh, we changed was that when I was first on the board, we actually had about 30 major issues that Lions were going to be involved in. And part of our program for that particular uh, year was to figure out what are we going to be good at and what are we not going to do anymore? Because we, you can't be a jack of all trades and handle 30 th different things and be a really good expert at all of them. There might be one or two geniuses in the world that can do that, but I'm not one of them. Uh, so we, we took surveys, we worked it down. Uh, we decided that we would have five new uh, items or four new items actually. And we kept vision. Then we added the hunger, then we added child cancer, we had it added the environment and we added diabetes as major focuses that we wanted to be going on today. They were actually picked by people from around the world and over 80,000 different lions around the world either got emails, got paper surveys, got telephone surveys, asking them questions about what they thought should be the things we should be dealing with today because we'd reached our 100 year point and we wanted to turn around or almost reached it at that point. And then we wanted to turn around and focus on the things that we can actually be really good at during this next 100 years of our service. So that's how we got to, to have these five prongs of lionism that we're gonna be working on. It doesn't mean everything else stops. If a local club has a program that's going that they like to do, they get to keep doing whatever they're doing. This is just what International has set up as the five main focuses. And that doesn't mean that the minor ones are not uh, eligible anymore. <clears throat> so the, the code of ethics is very long and I am not gonna attempt to read it to you. Uh, we, there's copies of it from Lions International. If you don't know how to get to it, you should talk to your secretary or your president or one of the district officers and say, hey, I wanna see what this code of ethics is. But if we live by that code of ethics, we have very good standards and we basically have good harmony as well. Uh, I'm not gonna go further with that one for right now because it's way too long. Laya Mahesh, could we have the next slide, please? Okay, these are just a bunch of good looking people. So now we're gonna flip them over. And <clears throat> a lot of things, where did that go? Okay, I think you went two slides up, but that's okay. The, no? Sorry, just stay where we are. We'll just put that other sheet I have here on the side for now. The um, officers of the club are elected annually. And I have to tell you that they, you know, who they are. So you got a president, you have, which in my club is myself, you have an immediate past president. That means if you're a repeat like I am, you're the immediate past president. Uh, then you have a vice president, which is our Valerie McKee. She is on the, on the call tonight. Our second vice president is Richard Lucy. Um, our secretary is past cabinet secretary, Marion Goldberg. Our treasurer is Ginny Bray. Uh, our membership chair is again myself, the service coordinator for our club is Marion Goldberg. 
Uh, and then we have the lion tamer is Janet Wilson, our tail twisters, Bob Titus. And then there's a bunch of other that Lions International wants us to have as officers and be members. And I, I will express that I agree that we should have them. The problem that I, I have sometimes is if you have a small club and we have a few people in here that are, are on small clubs, my club is basically 15 people. We show like 31 on Lions International because we have a branch club working in Point Pleasant to try and get that up. So it gives us greater numbers. But when you have a club that doesn't have the branch club or doesn't have some other affiliates, we at 14, when you get done filling all these slots that you have and all the positions that you want people to run, you can't have people doing five different jobs. So one of the things that I always hesitate when someone starts a new club, um, they turn around and they say, you've got to fill in everything because International says these are the, the committees that you have to have. Folks, no, you don't. You got to do what makes sense. And so if somebody can't do one of those kind of projects and you can't have five people running the different committees to fill in everything in the slots, you do what's best for your club, do the ones that are important, and the other ones will eventually fall in place when you get more members that you can actually spread them out. Um, now, he switched up to the elections and that's good, except for one thing. Um, as your presenter, I'm gonna say that my personal opinion is this slide is wrong. And basically it's because we have been doing it a different way in my club for a long time and it seems to work really well it's part of the problem is that this particular slide kind of assumes that you're going to have two meetings a month and so that you'll be able to do some of the readings and other things you have to do at a certain time and be able to say we have had two meetings and we've read this and we've done that and whatever uh, so when they say you are going to elect the officers annually that's correct um, and the only other part of it that's correct is that you, you want to vote not in any other term, but you, your term starting July 1 is the other correct piece. The three in the middle, I disagree with 100%. Uh, the nominating committee should actually be a, appointed by the president in December of the, the uh, first, year, first half of the year, and that's so that they can actually get together and work on picking out the nominees that they wanna to present to, to the club and they should be presented to the board of directors in January. So that that's the first time that they're gonna, we're gonna hear about it. There has to be a first reading of the nominations, which then becomes in your February meeting. Now, if you're like my club, that's the only meeting we have in February that's a general meeting. The second meeting that we have would be our board of directors and that doesn't qualify for letting the membership know who is being nominated. So then you have to turn around and in February, uh, you had the first reading. In March, you end up having the second reading that's required. In between, after the first reading and that second meeting, the secretary has to send out a letter to everybody in the club announcing who the nominations committee is putting up for the election at the, the, that particular year. Uh, <clears throat> after the uh, second reading that you have, which would be for us the first, first meeting in March, uh, then you would be able to have your election at that, in that meeting by first having nominations from the floor and then having the nominations properly closed by a motion and then actually taking a vote on any contested uh, items separately. So it's a little bit different. And the other problem with, with doing the time frame and doing your election in April, if you do your, your elections in April, whoever's gonna be the governor is gonna turn around and be getting all of your mail for about the set first six months until somebody realizes, oh, they didn't get their stuff in in time for the book. So they don't, it all goes to the governor. The governor's not going to want to get all that stuff. They're not going to want to get your bills and have to forward them off to you, make phone calls and send that sort of thing to you. So make sure that 
you change the schedule and going way back to uh, Merlot years, which was about 10, 12 years ago, this is the way we've been doing it in my club. We managed to get into the international directory each time because we do it in a timely fashion and we never have any hassles about getting the governor uh, calling us about paying our bills or doing this or that. So the schedule ends up being December and then January to the board, February for the first reading, March for the second reading, following the second reading, you've already got the, the notice out to of the nominations, then you have to have the vote at that March meeting. If you're lucky enough to be having two meetings a month, plus your board meeting, uh, then you can turn around and change this a little bit, but you wanna get it all done in March so that everything goes in that month earlier and makes it into the international directory. Okay, any, uh, you can ask questions later on about that, but um, can we move on Mahesh to the next one? Okay. <clears throat> Everybody likes to, to, at some point, get rewarded for doing different things. And we have members that are adamant that you have to give them their awards for whatever they, they do. And we have members like me who do things and we're not looking for awards. We just do them because they're there to be done and you choose to do it. So that's, that's the way my philosophy has been all of my 40 some years. And the idea is that International loves to send you out awards and someone some has to keep track of that. So there's something that when you bring in new members, they like to give you an October growth reward. They like to give you membership keys. So when you bring in your second member uh, in your career, they give you a membership key, a special pin that you would be able to wear that says two. And when you get to five, you get another one and they work all the way up to 50, up to a hundred uh, pins where you get different markings on a particular pin that tells everybody that you brought in that many members. Um, unfortunately for me, I have a drawer full of pins and I can't wear them all because I wouldn't be able to get off a, up out of a chair with the weight of all that metal. Um, and as far as the service chevrons, the longer you stay in with lions, you get little chevrons that you can attach underneath your regular pin that will tell people that you've been a lion for five years, you've been a lion for 10 years, 15 years, 20, 25, 30, and all the way up to 50 to 100, if anybody can make 100. Uh, so you do get rewarded for those kind of things for your longevity. And, and it's always fun to give out the 50-year pin to somebody and say, congratulations, because they've been here and doing such work for so many years. Um, we also have a um, sponsor recognition, which, which is a pin that's been coming out as a, it says sponsor on it for every time you sponsor a member. And they also have a, uh, another thing called extension awards. And the extension awards come from starting new clubs. Uh, if you've ever been involved with starting a new club or, or saved the club, you kind of should get an award for that first personally. Uh, but with extension, you turn around and it, each time a new club is started, it requires that there be two people who would be called guiding lions. And the guiding lions have to be lions and, that work with that particular new club in extension for two years before they get the re, the guiding lion pin for that particular event. Um, it's, there's also in the extensions, just a regular extension award that the district governor would get to give or nominate someone for that particular pin so that they get rewarded for, for starting the new club and not being necessarily the guiding lion. So we, we do love to give out awards. Uh, you heard about presidential awards. There's also leadership awards or certificates of appreciation from the president of international. And these are all special awards and they're, they're, the, uh, they're basically the first, second and third levels of awards that you can get besides getting the uh, ambassador of goodwill award, which is something that you generally don't get unless you are on the board 
and you serve for your two full years. Uh, so that's it. That's pretty much with awards. But if you're looking for them, we have them. Okay. Um, all right, we'll, we'll go to that slide. <clears throat> the, the benefits of Lions Club membership are numerous and include for the day ever. Uh, they, they include that there's a global community to do good for. There's also support and tools, resources to enhance your service. If you go on the Lions International website and you start early in the morning, you could be going to bed way into the next day and you haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg of all the things that are available to you on that website. So you will find support and tools and uh, resources to enhance your service and also your regular membership as a lion and your position as officers. Everything you could possibly think of and want has actually been addressed by Lions International over the years and it's available to you on the website. Um, the satisfaction and joy of helping others and those in need. One of the things that we sometimes ask people is, when did you really become a lion? Not, not when did you join, but when did you really become a lion? And some people think they just bat out the day that they signed up on their application and say, I became a lion. I can tell you that it doesn't hit you that quickly the day you sign the papers. That's anticipation that you want to start doing something. It gets to you at the point where you can get a letter from two five-year-old twins who were deaf when they were born, and as they were going to school, came to the Lions Club and said, the parents came and said, I, they need hearing aids, but we can't afford them. Can you help? And you go out and you get the several thousand dollars and you give them their hearing aids, and then you get a letter back. And it says to you, thank you, Lions. Today, we went to school for the first time. While we were walking to school, we heard the robin sing. We heard the leaves rustling in the trees. We heard the cars going by. We heard the sounds of the bicycle horns and the bicycle ringers letting people know people were on the road. We heard the sound of the cars and the beeping of the horns. And we heard the, the little candy wrapper coming off of the piece of chalk that we were going to eat for the first time. That's when you become a lion. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you're going to also turn around and <clears throat> uh, find that networking in your local community with the international community and leaders is something that you're going to really appreciate because you have different ideas for our country than we do for other countries. Uh, one of the, the quickest things we had to learn going on to the board was this works here in the United States, whatever you're proposing. But does it work in Africa? Does it work in India? Does it work in Belarus? Does it work in Nova Scotia? And you just, and Turkey, you, you don't know what the rules are in those particular countries when you're developing a response to a, a particular problem. And at one of our board meetings, we had such a situation where the people that had to handle the, the question came up with their responses. And when they went, back to present it to the people who were asking the question. They found out all the reasons why it didn't work. We had to go back and redraw up a new whole new plan because their country's rules or laws require different things than we were actually putting into the, the, the uh, response. So you find out that there's a bigger community and you start to learn how to negotiate and working, work out with things and see the picture in a much broader sense than what you were anticipating it was actually being done because you were using your US ideas versus the world's ideas. Um, <clears throat> the friendships, uh, I can tell you that uh, no matter where you go, you meet people. Um, those people are going to be lions, and those lions are going to remember the different things that you do with them. And so having been on the board, and people say to me, well, how many people did you actually meet. And I would have to tell them it's somewhere between 3,500 and 5,000 or more. 
that I actually met at the different conventions over the 42 conventions that we had to handle. And <clears throat> they'd say, well, okay, so how many of those people do you know? I said, well, the, I know the group that set up the convention for us and the group and the governor and his staff that we worked with, we know those people pretty good because you spent three to four days with them and you did everything together. So you kind of got to know them very personally. So I would say that, you know, at each, at each convention, we could probably pick up 15 to 20 people. So it's, it's a pretty good sizable number of the people that I have. Unfortunately for me, um, I put a bunch of people into my telephone and as a contact with their information. And I can go back and I can look and I can see when somebody says, what's his name or what's his wife's name? I can go back and look at my phone as long as I can remember who they are. Uh, sometimes we can't do that because they're, they're people that we didn't really react with that many times to remember them. So it's more like shaking your hand, walking through uh, the mall or something and saw somebody and said, hi, how you doing? And you shook your hand and you keep on walking and you go. So they're not all the personal, personal things, but they are very good things to, to remember people by. Um, and I can tell you that we, we communicate with a lot of the people that we've met for the, over the, the years and send them out cards and all kinds of stuff and they reciprocate. So we have a lot of friends that are scattered around the world because of lionism. So I can tell you that when I started and I was 29 years old, when I started being a lion, um, one of the things that, that kind of happened for me was because I had been working in a bank and had management position, uh, but no college, I needed, I needed to round out myself a bit more. And being a, being a part of the Lions, learning how to negotiate and dealing with different kinds of people from different backgrounds and things, it helped me tremendously both in my professional growth and uh, being able to have mediation skills in being a Lion. So it became very, very productive for me. And I can, I can tell you honestly that uh, during my career as a banker, I had to go to the uh, Fair, up to Fairfield University for a three week program up there over three years. And myself and one of my other friends from another bank down this way uh, had the same territories. And it was kind of fun because the two of us would go to the, our meetings and go to our classes every, other, every year during the summer, we had to go to uh, Fairfield and, and be there for two weeks. So while we were there, they were asking us questions. We had to do papers in between that were more like thesis papers. And when we got asked questions about, or the instructors would ask questions about certain things, my buddy and myself were the only two that were ever raising our hands. But by, by the end of the fifth day, people were, would only be saying, well, just ask Mel, just ask John. And, and it was crazy because they didn't have that experiences that we had being, we were from bigger banks and they were from smaller banks. And it was always interesting to see that they, they were very quick to tell me, and hopefully with people with degrees don't get upset with me, but they were very quick to say, oh, well, I have a master's degree, I have a PhD, but they couldn't answer the questions. And little old me without the college degree, 33 Rutgers credits from Rutgers University, I was able to answer the questions and John was able to answer the questions and we both had a great ball, you know, being there and being able to answer the questions and saying, what's wrong with all these people? That they don't have the experience that we had in the much larger uh, business uh, opportunity. So it was, it was very helpful in a lot of ways that way. And when it became time for me to be, move from a management position as a branch to a regional manager, and I beat out five people who had master's degrees I was very happy because my work ethic was enough to carry me through. And a lot of it came from being part of, of a lion. So uh, I, I always love lions for what they've done for me. Another th great thing about membership is in being a lion, you get to travel around the USA to our forums. You get to travel to our conventions. Uh, you get to travel globally to conventions as if you like to do that. and. Each time you go and you go back and forth, you meet different people. And then you find this, you go to the next event, those same people are there and you, you have this group of friends. And I had a, a bunch of friends as directors before I ever got to be one. 
uh, from going to all the, the Canada for USA Canada forums and going to conventions. And I, I tell people all the time, we have these things going and they're educational programs that actually will help you in your personal life and in your business life. So that's a great thing. So uh, membership does make you have friends and makes makes the world a better place for it. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, well, the last, last light on my, item on that particular sheet says uh, respect and credibility of being a lion. Kind of think that we kind of talked about that a little bit with our story about Africa and the, the things that can happen, but um, never have a problem with someone who's being a lion. And I, I can tell you different stories where we've had negative comments uh, from vendors saying, no, you can't buy this because it's for so-and-so, uh, for a different group, and you're not in that group, so you can't do that. And one of our friends had gone to, actually to Africa, uh, I'm sorry, to Turkey, and they turned around and the wife wanted to get a particular piece of jewelry that the person had sitting on the, the counter and was trying to sell. They wouldn't sell it to them because they were Americans and they were people not in the particular group that the, the person was catering to. So they dickered and then went back and forth. And then the, the wife and the husband walked back and the husband had his lapel pin. And this time the vendor recognized that he was a lion. And the person turned around and said, you're a lion? And he said, yes, I've been a lion for whatever number of years. And the vendor turned around and said, you can buy anything you want. You're a lion. You're a respected person in the world. We love you for what you do. Anything you want, just tell me. So the, the attitude changed from very negative to very positive because of wearing the pin. And that's the respect that people have. Uh, I met a, a woman actually from Panama, and she had become a lion after she left Panama and had tried to be a lion. And they, they told her no, she couldn't be a lion. So she came back, came to California and was in the Alliance in California. And she got to be the president of her club. And when she did that, she took her trip back to her native country of Panama. And when she arrived and she went to the Lions meeting, they realized, oh my God, she's a woman and she is a president of the Lions club. And they opened up their arms and they took her in and made her ver everything very friendly with her. And so it was a great tribute, but she was going back really to rub it in her nose and say, see, I can be a lion and she can, and she is. So um, that was an interesting story because I've never run into that kind of a situation where a lion wasn't welcomed someplace else. So that's, that'll take care of that last one. Okay, can we move on Mr. Mahesh? No, oh, here comes the new one, okay. Um, this slide is, is kind of abbreviated. Uh, I do a, a much larger breakdown on this when I do the treasurer's program. Uh, but you, you turn around with your club dues and you have the international dues, the district and multiple dues. These are all in interesting things and they're, they're different in each place that we go. Most of the international dues is the same. The district dues and the multiple district dues they vary somewhat, and then multiple won't change for any of us from New Jersey here, but your club dues is very different. Uh, I was at a district meeting just a week ago, and one of the participants turned around and said that uh, they're still charging the same $60 for their dues. And I didn't say anything, but I sat back in my chair, and I'm trying to figure out how do you do that? The international dues is currently $43 annually. For the state of New Jersey's dues, we pay $18 annually to the multiple district. Our dues for district that I'm in, which is L in, in the Southern part of the state is $12. I don't know for sure what the other two are now uh, for J and N. And that, that total just for my group would be $73. We haven't added in the local to run the club dues there. In my particular case, we do 
so that my general dues comes out to be $106 to be a member of my club. Uh, we have a lot of clubs that don't charge more than $75 or $80. And I wonder how they actually do that, because if you send people to a district meeting or you want to, they run to represent the club or you, you're having a testimonial for your governor and you'd want to have representation from your club, we send that person and we spend the money to send that person so that we are represented by one of the officers or the, whichever group that happens to be. Uh, so the dues has to be figured out uh, very specifically to, of what you're gonna be willing to do and then turn around and um, add on to your, that club dues. Then when you look at this and you say, oh boy, this is, this is terrible. You know, we, this, this is gonna be something really bad. And then international at this convention in Montreal is going to vote on a $7 increase in your dues. The dues is going to be broken down and 23 will be an additional $3 that you would have to pay for international dues. With that's going to make that number uh, go up to 46. The following year in 24, you're going to have another $2 be tacked on. And then in 25, you're going to have the final $2 tacked on. So your international dues is going to end up being uh, $50 flat. Um, Part of what they keep telling everybody is, well, it's going to be still lower than we charge, than other groups charge. My point to that is, uh, having been on the Finance and Operations Committee for two years on the board, is that you don't necessarily have to change the dues. Maybe you have to reduce some of the things that you do. Uh, the, the international officers have moved this to go forward. It's probably going to pass, um, but I, I'm always opposed to, to someone saying, well, because we charge less than Rotary or we charge less than Kiwanis, we should raise ours. That doesn't work for me. Telling me what we're actually spending it on, how we're spending it on, why we really need it, not just because we're less than somebody else is a much better argument for me. But I'm pretty sure uh, this is going to pass in Montreal. They had it on the floor last year and it was taken down before the convention uh, because of the pandemic. And now they're bringing it back again. So we'll have to see what the delegates vote for in Montreal. So that would be your, your base, basic breakdown of dues. And when you're setting up your local dues, there are so many things that you have to, to look at. Um, and if anybody wants the treasurer's report it's like four different pages five different pages of things to be considered into your dues i can send this out to mahesh and he can send it to all of our participants tonight it's just called the treasurer's uh, duties so that you'd be able to figure it out but some of them are very simple you have a newsletter cost if you use that at the time we wrote this up we were still using paper newsletters uh, guest speakers, dinner costs, your district governor's official visits. Uh, I've been to clubs where the night that you're visiting and been invited to visit, the treasurer goes around and, and tells everybody, okay, give me two more bucks for, for each, each of you because we have the guests here tonight. Uh, that's not the way to budget things. And it's, you know, as a, as a governor, one of my things and my predecessor's things was if the club has to do that, we'd rather just pay rather than going around and fleecing everybody for two bucks when they're already struggling. Uh, the vice governor has an official visit, so he should be taken care of. You have a region chairperson sometimes, and you have zone chairpersons who make official visits to your clubs and they should be accommodated if possible, but that should be included in your, your local dues when you're setting up how much the, the club dues is gonna be. Some of the awards like a perfect attendance pin would have to come out of administration. Uh, if your club buys separate liability insurance for their events, uh, you have surety bond for the treasurer or the secretary who's ever handling the money. You have a postage and maybe a post office box. Uh, you got stationery, you have office supplies. If you give out a lion of the award a year, if you're going to have president and secretary and treasurer's awards, 
certificates for guest speakers, uh, membership appreciation, and are you bored yet? Uh, state council meetings expense, state site meetings expense, district meetings expense, regional meeting expense, zone chairman meeting expense, GLT meeting expense, charter night expense, holiday party expense, installation night expense, governor's testimonial ads and dinner, charitable foundation ads, dinner, stars, that we have a star program and we used to have a star program uh, with our foundation and so it was a separate item to budget for. And I got one more page, uh, state convention registration, the state convention packages, state convention rooms and meals and packages, international convention registration, USA Canada Leadership Forum, USA Canada Leo Forum, uh, Lions Day at the United Nations as an expense if the club wants to do that. Those aren't required items, but they're all part of what you would want to consider so that when you set up your, your budget and you're saying uh, it's in the current issue that we're $33 would cover what we do per member, um, that works for, for us. It may not work for you, but we can send this to you so you can have a really good look at what a treasurer should consider when he's proposing what the budget and the dues should be to the club. And then they have justification for it. Okay. Um, when it comes to uh, the, the district and multiple district dues, those are things that we have to pay. The secretary or the treasurer has to send out the dues bills for each of the current years, the beginning of the year for July 1. And that's where we run into a problem every year because we have clubs and sometimes a district that doesn't quite ante up the money soon enough to be helpful to the district or to the multiple district. Uh, so your dues bill should be going out the first week of July every year. And that, that's regardless of whether your club meets in the summertime or it doesn't meet in the summertime. If you close up shop after your second meeting in, in June and you don't do anything again till September, the dues bills were due the 15th of the month by international or by the district or by the state all of our dues bills say due upon receipt. So if they get them out the first week of July, then the money will come in so that it's, it's there when they get the dues bill from the district that says you owe this much money for the district dues and this much money for multiple district dues, the money will be there to make that payment. It's not when you get it, even though that's when Lions International actually has it written that way, uh, it can't be when you get it, it has to be when it's received and you have to pay the bill. So um, at our last board uh, governor's meeting, we heard that one of our districts was going to pay the a partial payment on their dues for the second half of the year. Uh, there's an, a problem for me at seeing that because that bill was due on January 1st. And everybody knew that it was going to be whatever had to be collected by that time. So how they're doing the collections and making the payments, that's, that's becoming an issue because the state office can't run without the dues money coming in and the district can't run without their dues money coming in. So their bills have to be paid one way or the other. And it shouldn't be something that's like 90 days or 120 days late. It should be much, much sooner. So bills or secretary and treasurers have to start doing their billing a lot sooner than um, obviously taking place at that point. <laughs> uh, we heard that. <laughs> the, uh, the activities budget and the administration budget, those are things that, that you have to figure out. The administration, you were talking about those with the dues because that's what funds administration is your dues money. The activities budget, that's based on what income you're going to bring for that particular uh, lion's year. And then you disperse that based on, we can give $1,000 here, 500 there, whatever, to try and balance out what you, you're going to raise and give that out to the different organizations. The, the uh, activity budget at, at this point is probably hard to figure out for some clubs because 
We have no fundraisers. We don't know how much we're going to be able to get because what we used to get is probably not what we're going to get this year. Maybe not to get that same number again next year. So till this pandemic is really wiped out, uh, we don't know the income side. And without knowing the income side, it makes it hard to decide how you want to split up the budget. So you end up making a budget. You know that some of those items might be, we'll call it pork because that's what the, the federal government calls everything is pork. Some of those things you don't have to do. Some of those things are just things that you would like to do so that you, you fund the things that you have to do first and then you would use the other monies that you have for the, as leftover to figure out if you can give a part of these things that we would call the pork. Um, that's a whole hour and a half worth of conversation about all the budgets. So uh, we're not gonna be able to go too much further than that, but it, it's some of it's covered in the treasurer's program that I, I told you I can send out. So we'll, we'll get that to you. All right, uh, let's go to the meetings. Okay, we're good. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do the go to the multiple district and multiple district and the district. So, all right, now I'm, I got the page you got up, so we'll just go with that. All right. Um, organizationally, we talk an awful lot about numbers and different things, positions and all that kind of stuff. What's really important to people, in my opinion, for orientation is what's still going on in the club now and what do I need to know now? We start getting into all the positions in the district and all the international stuff. It gets very confusing. And it's really something that we don't need to know to be a lion today, but we need to learn all that stuff over the next six months to a year or so as we, we actually are part of the Lions Club. Um, so our organization that we have, since we have it on the chart, uh, is 750 districts with 35 or more clubs and at least 1,250 members in each district. That's the minimum that Lions International has set, and it's always been that number for all the 40 plus years I've been a lion, that they have to have 1,250 members in each district in order to be able to fund the budget they give to the district governor to run his district. They don't give them all the money, that comes out of your dues, but some of the things can get adjusted to the international level and paid for for some of the extra things that we wanna do. Um, so each district does have a district governor. Um, if they fall under 1250, that becomes an appointment by the directors from the international because it's called a provisional district and they have to send, the governors have to have, past governors have to have a meeting uh, together, pick a person that they recommend to be that governor and then have that approved by the international board when you're under 1250. So it becomes a big issue about membership and having that particular number, but it's something that a brand new lion has no idea and probably doesn't even care at this point of whether it's 1250 or 1770. Uh, but it's something that in time you need to know if you're gonna move up in positions so that you have an idea of where your particular district stands and how healthy it happens to be. Uh, the idea of multiple districts is just having two districts in a particular territory. In New Jersey, we have the state, we have the three uh, districts, which are showing there is NJ and L, 
and and we also have the multiple district 16 which is represents the entire package of all new jersey um, so that's one of the things that you're going to need to know down the road but not something you need to know today so let's go to the next one okay so we have in our case, because we're a multiple district uh, and we're a sub district, we each have our own people that are in these positions, but we have a district governor. We have a vice district governor, a second vice district governor. Those are important positions because the second and the first should be learning, studying, checking out things on LCI to stay abreast of all the new changes that they have. And they're also there so that if the governor becomes ill or in some way incapacitated for a particular meeting, those two officers, the first vice and second vice, would then be sitting at the council meeting making decisions for that particular district, just as if the governor were there, but the, they would have the authority to make the decision either way. Uh, so they're very important people, but the training process is two years coming up through as a vice so that they can then be trained or be running the district and have a knowledge of what's really going on within the district. Um, the, when, when I was running in 1999, 2000, I had been out from 95 to the, the previous 1999 to four years, going to the district meetings and, and the different conventions to kind of figure out where everything was and what was happening because we didn't have these training sessions. We had a governor, we had a vice governor. So when you got to be vice governor, that was your first year to be getting trained unless you did your own thing, which I did. Um, then gradually we got to having the, the second position and regular scheduled training for each, the, each of these positions. Um, your cabinet secretary treasurer, that's, that's a very important position, whether it's, it's split or it's together. The cabinet secretary has to send out all kinds of notices and they should be able to use that position having been a president before and either his own chair or this cabinet secretary position before they could advance to the second, first or governor. So there is a progressive steps here that you have to go through in order to become a governor. Um, the district chairpersons are there's many different different chairpersons in the committees, and the list is too long to even go through. Uh, Council Chair, Council of Governors is the three governors from NJ and L, and th those people uh, make the decisions, and all those decisions that they make affect you as a general membership, and all the lions of our state. Uh, <clears throat> then there's the Global Action Team. I'm gonna steal a little bit of credit for this um, because when we were on the board with my group in 2015, 2017, we set up a program to start working on and we called it North American Initiative. And from that, it's grown into the global action team members, the global membership team, the global leadership, the global service, which were all part of what we were doing as the North American Initiative. And this has developed and developed and developed so that we now have GM, GMA, uh, the Global Membership Approach, which is really a good thing. So we're glad we got, got to plant the seeds that are now part of what we're actually doing. And what we're doing currently is actually having more progress than we did with North, North American Initiative. And it's also be, being taken care of in other places uh, besides just North America. So, okay, let's go to the next one. Let's see what he pops up with here, district. Okay. All right, district conventions. All right. The, <clears throat> the district conventions that we have at the current time is our, our May 19th through the 22nd is going to be at Harris, uh, I'm sorry, at uh, Tropicana in uh, Atlantic City. I wrote down the wrong thing. But 
it's going to be the first time that we're going to be in Tropicana because we've been in Bally's for like nine to 10 years. Uh, that got sold and the new company wasn't doing the business we wanted to do so or make changes. So we uh, went back to Harris and part of Caesars group. And they said, oh, we've got your deposit. We've got everything covered. We'll give you the same, the same, the same, the same, the same. And when do you want to go? So we're going back, going down to this time to the new casino, which does have a lot more amenities, a lot more things to do, a lot more um, entertainment available to the individuals and their, their relatives and friends that are down there. So I think you're going to really enjoy that. You're also going to have uh, conventions coming up for other places than what we talked about before, that there'll be a lot of travel involved that you can do. Uh, we have our convention July 24th to the 28th in this year will be in Montreal, Canada. The following annual convention for international would be in Boston, July 7th through the 11th of 2023. Uh, one that I'm really looking forward to is going to Melbourne, Australia, uh, June 21st to the 25th of 2024. And then our next one after that will be Mexico City from July 4th to July 8th of 2025. Uh, nice round of places to go to, north, south, and warm. That's, that's what you want to have. But there's many, many opportunities to go to other places. Uh, there's forums in seven different er constitutional areas of the world. And if you so desire, you can actually run to those conventions and sign up and go if you can speak some of the languages that you need to be able to speak for them. Uh, that makes it more enjoyable. Um, I don't know about a translating package on your phone if that's going to do it for you. But we've been to many, many conventions and, and most of them are very enjoyable. Okay, so it has the list up and it's already part of your package there. So that's good. Want to move on, Mr. Mahesh, Lion Mahesh? Uh, you're going backwards? Okay. Yeah, we, we jumped from district to the international, so I moved there. Okay, well, that's what you popped up is not part of what I ever had in mind, but that's okay. We'll just handle it. All right, our history. I uh, didn't think we were going to do a whole lot of history. The <clears throat> International Association was founded in 1917 by Melvin Jones. Um, one of the things that I love to bust people about is asking the date of his birth so people can turn around and figure that out. Uh, the other interesting thing is always to ask about if anybody knows what the name of his wife is and what her profession was. Um, Melvin was an insurance man. He came out of Arizona uh, after the uh, Civil War and things had gotten settled down and uh, he turned around and grew up and went to Chicago in a little before 1917. He ended up owning his own insurance company, made a lot of money, decided that it's nice I make money, but there's a lot of people who need a lot of help. So he got together with a number of the people in his individual groups that he was a membership member of uh, from his organization. And they talked about helping out people and giving back to the community, which at that particular time was pretty much of a novel idea. No, most people didn't do that. It was hooray for me and I got an extra buck and I don't care if you do or don't. Uh, so things started to change and Melvin got them to talk about joining a group and becoming the Lions was an issue because there was a group already with that name and that particular group then became the, the leader of that group, uh, Dr. Woods, this became the leader of Lions International uh, at, at that particular time. And they decided that they would call themselves Lions Clubs International. Uh, so Dr. Woods became our first president and Melvin Jones, all of his years as the executive secretary, he was never the president of the organization. He always was the second man leading everything and it worked out really well. His vision was fabulous and he started moving around to different places in 1920. He went to Canada, to Windsor, Canada. 
and we had our first international club being in Canada. Uh, 1925, we had an interesting speaker come to the convention because Lions didn't have a general purpose or a stated function that they wanted to tackle. It was just doing things for people as it kind of popped up in those first few years. And then we had the, the wonderful Helen Keller come and challenge the Lions to be Knights of the Blind. Uh, I can tell you that um, she's been passed a long time. And while we were on the board, we happened to go to Alabama and we went to the home of Helen Keller. And I can tell you that I am not a person who thinks that there are spooks or spirits in the world, but I can tell you that in that house, we felt that there was definitely a spirit of Helen Keller in that house. There was just a certain vibe that came from walking through the rooms, touching the furniture that she had been with, going out to the water fountain at the, uh, with the pipe and, the, and pumping it up out of the ground in the backyard, all those kind of things. And just when you left, you just felt like you just had a real out of body experience with somebody or something. Um, 1945, the uh, Lions were asked to do some work with the United Nations and the individuals from Lions International, both Melvin Jones and I'm it's not, it's, I'm trying to think it was somebody, if, I can't think of it was a Whalen Kramer, but anyway, we were asked as, as the International Association in doing the work we did and had been traveled around the world uh, we were turning around and asked to, to help write that particular charter, which is why we have Lion's Day at the UN and you don't have Lion's Day or Rotary Day at the UN or Kiwanis Day at the UN. We wrote the whole non-governmental section of the United Nations Charter. And so we've been invited every year since to be able to have a meeting there and uh, mingle with the different delegates. Uh, 1957, we had another advancement. We had the Leo Club program was created. And then in 1968, uh, Lions International Foundation is established. And that was a big deal because when we, we went in 1944 under IRS regs, we had to sign up and they didn't classify us as a 501c3. They classified us as a 501c4. So the people who would make donations or want to give us larger donations couldn't get any tax advantage on it because of the uh, classification. International did try several times to go back and have our designation changed. And because there's so many other charitable organizations in the same boat, IRS said, no, we're not changing it. So we went around the corner and said, okay, we'll just set up a new foundation uh, I call it Lions Clubs International Foundation instead of Lions Clubs International. And then we will be able to apply as a 501c3, which we did. We were successful. And that started our ability to really help a lot of different organ people in countries around the world with disasters, hurricanes, tornadoes, uh, earthquakes, you name it, we've been there. Uh, and if, if you've read some of the stuff about LCIF, you know that we've passed the billion dollars that we have given out in uh, grants to different places over the, the years that we've been in, in progress here. 1987 uh, became the first service club and club organization to admit women as members. Um, yeah, uh, that's very true. And it took a long time to get some of the women to give up because when we would ask them, to be members, they were lionesses before, before that. And we would ask them to turn around and join the Lions Club. Many of the clubs, the women's clubs said, no, we don't want to join. We actually outraised the men and we're not letting them come in here and mess up what we've got going. So they didn't want the men in and they weren't coming out to work with the men other than their, their general support, but they weren't going to become members of the men's Lions Club. Uh, that's gradually dissipated now. We, ha we have a few lionesses still available as clubs. Uh, in Chester, New Jersey, we had the last one two years ago just converted to uh, being a regular lions club. 
but they call them the Chester Lioness Lions Club. So that they are definitely still part of with their lioness uh, mentor or hat that they used to wear. Uh, 1990, we did the first site first uh, campaign and uh, that was a very successful one. We turned around and spent a lot of money or collected a lot of money. We busted the budget as we had done in every other campaign we've ever done. So we were able to raise more funds than we uh, were looking for initially. So that worked out very well. Then <clears throat> International uh, Network grew to over 200 countries and the, the geographic areas. Um, Jeff Gans, our ID mentioned last night or in his presentation last month, uh, the UN has 193 countries in, in part of the UN. So we're ahead of them by seven. Uh, so that's a good thing. Okay. Mahesh, can we have the next one? Okay. Thank you. Okay, the uh, the logo is something that's it's. We got asked the question the other night. I was sort of surprised. Uh, the the other well, in one of the previous presentations, somebody asked. Uh, I think it was Jeff when they were explaining the the logo, or maybe it was Mahesh. One of the participants asked, "Is there's anything?" significant about the difference between the lion's head on the left and the lion's head on the right. And having been a lion for 40 years, I never studied the pin that hard to see that there was a difference or not. Uh, I was looking initially for the red tongue being there or not being there. And uh, I didn't see what this person saw, but he, he studies that kind of thing. And he, there is some slight differences. Uh, but it's just the, the way it was manufactured and designed. It has no significance as far as Lions Clubs International is concerned. So your, your Lions pin, uh, when you're wearing it, you have a Lions head facing left and you have a Lions head facing the right. And those are significant because we're looking at our past and we're looking at our future. And what we would normally say is our very bright future. So that's the why that there's two heads that you have Lions International, top and bottom of the pin. That's the name of the organization. And as Jeff recently reported, and for those of you who may not be from New Jersey, if there are some of you, Lions International is changing the name of Lions Clubs International to be Lions International. They're getting rid of the word club for what they do but not for what you and I do in our club level. So it's gonna be a little bit different in the future. There's gonna be a change and go back to being what's on the pin rather than having the word clubs in the middle. <clears throat> the name was chosen by secret ballot and uh, something that was very interesting to me that I learned listening to Bob Moore's presentation from January was actually the first pin that was suggested or a second pin that was suggested rather, rather than the one we have was actually a pin that had the, the uh, mason, mason symbol with their uh, tools that they had on it and like a V or whatever. So everybody thought that that one might be looking like we're too much of a Masonic group as opposed to being a separate group. And so we ended up with the Lions International that we had, but that other one would have been interesting as well. Uh, so <clears throat> this is something that you can talk about any, any way you want. Um, it was chosen by secret ballot and, and the lions stood for the strength, the courage, the fidelity and the vital action. Uh, we used to say a joke, something about the uh, Rotary would start a project. The Kiwanis would continue the project, but the lions were always the one that would finish the project. And so that's kind of why we have the lion here uh, for his strength and what we actually do. So Mahesh, I think we can go to the next one. Okay. 
So we have a, a, an organizational structure that we're that's our parent basically you have to think of it that way like this is a parent company and the clubs are the uh, individual groups underneath it uh, so the international officers that we have at this point in time uh, our president is doug alexander from new york city our first vice president is brian sheehan our second vice president is patty hill that's dr patty hill our third vice president is Fabricio Oliveira, and our immediate past president is Dr. Young Yul Choi. Uh, we have New York, Minnesota, Canada, Brazil, and South Korea. So you can see that we're definitely an international organization, and our officers go through that particular group. At the current time, that we have 34 members on the board. The number changes. Uh, one year, the new, one year the United States has twelve. The following year, it has eleven. And that opposite year, you have a director coming on from Africa, which became our eighth constitutional area because they reached uh, fifty thousand lions at that point. Then we have a, a constitution and bylaws that the international has governs everything that we do. Um, you can probably find every answer that you want within that particular document to run your organization. And when you can't get everything to be agreed upon, it even has a group of clauses where it deals with the uh, dispute resolution so that you have some way within Lions to turn around and uh, solve whatever problem you have. Um, a quick aside, I, I've been involved with some of those disputes in my particular area. And one of the things that I can say is, I was probably one of the few governors who ever was threatened to be sued by a past district governor um, because his particular club had removed him from the club and he wasn't happy with that. So he ended up filing a lawsuit. We ended up in superior court in Freehold. And the interesting thing there was we, we had three or four lion lawyers, because you had to be a lion lawyer to represent or on either side. And uh, our lawyers got called to the judge's chambers and he turned around and said, um, you guys have a constitution and bylaws. In it, it has your dispute resolution process. Now I want you to get out of my court, go back and follow the procedure, follow it to the end, and I don't want to see any of you come back here ever again. And so that's how it was adjudicated. The individual was handled through a dispute resolution process. Uh, the past governor was selected, uh, who was agreeable to both parties on the both sides. And the decision of that particular individual was that the person should remain removed from his club. And that, that was the way he had to find another club. Um, he found a club 50 miles from his home and they took him in and he stayed there for a few years before he went out to Arizona and uh, eventually 10 years later passed away. Uh, but my, that was the first question my wife said to me after that was, we're going to get sued and lose our house again? Maybe you shouldn't be governor. Well, the, the solutions are right there in the Constitution and bylaws. So none of that did happen. So there's nothing to worry about. Okay, um, next slide, please. So PID Mel, I just want to do a time check. Uh, we, we need at least 10, 15 minutes for the Kahoot and we were expecting to wrap up by 30. So please just uh, bear that in mind and maybe we should just, you know, it's impossible to cover the entire history and all facts yes. in one. Uh, so let's, uh, if we can wrap up in five minutes. Yeah, we, we can do that because there's there's only a, a few more pages and he's okay. already filled in the information I was going to fill in so I don't have to really read it all they can read it. Okay. Um, yeah. All right, he's on a different page again. Okay. All right. Um, the international headquarters is out in Oak Brook, Illinois. Um, that's um, that probably something you need to know because when they do the Kahoot later on, all the things that we discuss tonight 
are the only things that are going to be on the Kahoot. So it won't be something you had to learn before tonight. So keep that in mind. Um, I don't know that that's the hint because I haven't seen any of the questions. Okay. Um, we do have 275 staff members, give or take, uh, 11 different divisions. Uh, we, we have everything in here that you could possibly want. Um, we have Jeff Gans who's sitting on the marketing committee that's listed near the bottom. Uh, and they kind of have their hands in almost everything that we do in Lions International or in our, our districts where we deal with Lions International. Uh, so that's something that you, you might want to uh, see what some of the things they do, but Jeff just loves to talk about what he's doing. So just ask him and I'm sure you'll get the, the short version. Um, members, member operations and support. That's the one that probably most people get to deal with uh, when they're making phone calls to international because there's an issue either with the information that's on somebody's profile or they, they need some other kind of help to answer a question about this or that. Uh, many, many questions are, are handled by the uh, district administration, but that you also get the legal department involved in in my, my two years, we were involved with all of them because we were the money guys and everybody who wanted to spend any money or do anything had to come to us. Uh, so it, it's, it does run kind of smooth. Everything has to be done in a very short period of time. And while you're on the board and getting the information, you're going to get reports from the individual um, committees that the international has. And then you have to get that digested before the next morning at 7.30 when you go into your first preliminary board meeting, go over the different things that have to be done, make any changes, come back and have another meeting over those things. All the decisions have to be done very quickly. So now they're sending it instead of in paper, uh, they're actually sending it uh, over the email. So that you can tell that there, there's support there for you if you, you need it in any way. You have any question you have you if even if you don't know where you want to go which one to pick you can just ask the operator tell her what you were talking about and she'll tell you where you have to be sent and she'll send you there uh, from their their page so Mahesh do you want to do another page okay all right um this is the one page that I did want to, to kind of hit a little bit. The International Foundation for LCIF, as we call it, they have gone actually over the $1 billion mark in grants so far. Uh, that's, a, that's a major milestone for the organization. And, and it's, it's because we're so good at what we do. But you have to remember that when the Lions turn around and get given a grant, they also get given a sheet of paper that says this is your accountability sheet. You have to provide all the receipts for every single penny. And, and I remember that a couple of years back, we had a, uh, a problem with the uh, Sandy hurricane. And one of the districts was giving out the credit cards for Lowe's or something like that. And what the $10,000 worth of those cards to pass them out to the families in need. And when they came up at the end, they couldn't account for one card. International told them, send me back the $50. So it, they do make sure that they account for every single penny. When I applied for a grant for the uh, Ten Tenwick uh, Hospital project that we did starting in 15, the first budget I sent in, I had, I think something like $180 and I put miscellaneous because being a banker, you want everything to balance. So I sent it with that number and they, they called me up and said, you have to adjust your budget because you can't call something miscellaneous. You either have to identify it or you have to not include it. So we had to have a budget that didn't balance or whatever number of dollars, hundred and some dollars. Um, so they do follow through, check everything very thoroughly and make sure that you can account for everything that you have. So um, they do wonderful work. You just have to work with them and you have to do the project so that it flows through their schedule. They only meet three times a year, 
but the schedules you have to follow are usually three to six or seven months prior to the meeting this is going to get into so that they can have the time to review it before it gets on the calendar before it goes to that following committee uh, meeting so you have a long lag time working with lcif on a lot of things if you're doing a sp particular grant request uh, some of that's supposed to be getting better um, i haven't done a grant in the last two years so i'm not really sure how much progress they've made but this this is the place where you can always go and plead your case and maybe get the money you need to support some particular project within your district okay we are just at 8 31 and i guess that's where we need to stop so that we can have some questions from the people attending So there was one there was one question and I did respond privately to uh, BDG Cash. His question was, are the branch club dues the same as sponsoring club? Yes. The branch club dues would be the same as the club that is sponsoring them and, until they break off because they're members of that particular club. And then when they, they get to their 20 members to split off and become their, their own club, then they get to set up their own budget and their own amount of money that they uh, would be charging for dues. Thank you, Bill. At least to help you out. Were there any other questions? Uh, you can, you know, feel free to put them in chat or email, and we will respond to you later. Uh, if there are, if there are no other questions, maybe it's time to get started with the trivia. Okay, we will start with the trivia while waiting for the questions. Also, okay. Uh, those who have not done the trivia before with Kahoot, uh, please. Uh, go to your browser or uh, either on your computer or on phone and type in kahoot.it, K-H-O-O-T dot I-T. And once you reach there, uh, hold on for a second. While you pick that up, I do want to uh, give my sincere thanks to uh, PID Mel for uh, for a wonderful presentation today and his time in preparing for that. Absolutely glad to be able to do it for you. All right, when you go to kahoot.it, put in the pin 4568297, two. Nine seven. When we are waiting, there are a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. Um, Barbara, if you can put in a, the, your partner in service into the chat, we send a certificate. And uh, I wanted to know who the uh, gentleman next to you is. Is my husband Donald. OK. Uh, yeah. I will remember that. So please go to kahoot.it and put in the pin 4568297. Then it will ask for uh, your nickname. Uh, put some nickname that we will recognize you by. I know that there are a couple of names that are not recognizable, for example, 14K. 
but I know who 14K is. 14K is, I'm sure it is uh, District Governor Debbie. There are two of them. Debbie and Debbie? Let's go to this browser. Go I, <laughs> I don't know. I've never had to do that, but I guess you can go on there. There must be some kind of controls where you can do that. I can't do it. Okay, since uh, we are running short of time, Just we have seven, we have seven uh, eight participants. Uh, you can join at any point of time. So let's start with the uh, trivia. Um, again, you can join anytime. We have the pin in the chat. So let's let's it's start. Just we're watching now as one browser. There's probably others mm -hmm. that we can get to somewhere. So here is the Lions orientation trivia for today. Question number one: When was the first Lions convention? First international Lions convention. Red, 2016. Blue, 2000. Uh, Oh no, 1917, yellow 1918, and green 1921. When was the first science convention? And uh, two of you are right. It is 1917. That is when uh, we had uh, the, uh, our association was founded. Let's see who, who had it right. Just a lion is on the top. RM is just behind. And rest of the names that we see, because it beyond, be, uh, beyond being right, hmm, uh, how fast that you answer also matters. And uh, um, the other people are faster than everybody else. Question, how much time we Next have to answer this question? Next question, who was the first Lions Club International President, Arvin Khan, Dr. W.P. Woods, Benjamin Franklin Jones, and Harry Newman. Red, Cam, Blue, Woods, Yellow, Jones, and Green, Newman. Thus, W.P. Woods was our first international president. Harry, Harry Newman was the first president out of, who was not American, he was a Canadian. Uh, he was the president in 1925. And uh, Benjamin Franklin Jones, who just followed uh, Harry Newman, um, and he was the first international president from New Jersey. Let's see who had it right. Okay, uh, just a line is still on top. Ray, Cash, RM, and 14K are following the leader. Next question. True or false? Youth empowerment is Lion's global cause. True, blue, red, false. Youth empowerment is Lion's global cause. Oh, it's false, false, false. Oh my God. Yes, it is, it is false. Uh, our our five uh, global causes oh, are yeah, yeah. science. Mahesh, you have to unmute. Okay, I did. Yeah. So I think I don't know how much you missed, but our five global causes are um, sight, hunger, um, environment, childhood cancer, and diabetes. And we have our LEO program, which is a youth empowerment program, which is integral part of our association. So since 19, uh, like 2017, every project that we do, everything that we do, it, we always call it Lions and LEOs. So we do empower them, but that is not our global cause. Let's see the leaderboard. 14K is on the top. RM, Just a Lion, Mickey, and Ray are following the leader. Next question. Who was the first woman to be the international president? Red, Nilofar Bakhtiar. Blue, Gudrun Young Daughter. Yellow, Susan Henderson. And green, Patty Hill. 
who was our first woman international president. Yes, most of you are right. Gudrun was our first international president who happened to be a woman. Just to give you a little bit more information, the uh, Susan Henderson, who was pictured when we had this trivia, she is the first woman to be um, a member of Lions Club in the modern times. We did have women members in 1917, but uh, it, it was discontinued in 1987 when the program opened again for the women, uh, Susan Henderson became the first woman to be the uh, member of Lions Club. Nilofar Bakhtiar from Pakistan is the first woman international director. And Patty Hill is the second, is going to be second international president, first one from North America, from Canada. 14K, uh, PD, uh, like DG um, Governor uh, Debbie is on fire. She is on the top. Just a lion, Cash, RM, and Mickey are following the leader. Let's go to the next question. What is a multiple district? Multiple district is unusually large district, a district which exchanges into several countries, has more than one sub-district. A district is visited by the president multiple times. Yes, most of you are right. Multiple district is, uh, multiple district consists of more than one sub-districts. Uh, New Jersey, multiple district 16, has three sub-districts, N, J, and L. There is a little bit of switch into the leaderboard. Just a lion, just reached at the top, Cash, 14K, RM, and Mickey are following the leader. Next question. Who gets Melvin Jones Fellowship? A thousand dollar donated to LCIF on their behalf. Someone who met Melvin Jones, recommended by district governor for their years of service. Someone who donated $500 to Lions Clubs International. Again, most of you are right. Uh, the $1,000 donated to LCIF, like Lions Club International Foundation, on their behalf. I'm running a little fast because I want to catch up with the time. But Just a Lion is on the top. Cash is on fire with an answer streak of three. 14K, RM, and Ray are following the leader. Next question, true or false? Money raised by general public can be only used to send someone to the international convention. True, blue, red, false. Money raised from general public can only be used to send someone to the international convention. False, you're right. The money raised by general public can only go to the service activities. It cannot be used for administration and certainly not for sending someone to the international convention. There is a little bit of change in the leaderboard at the bottom, but Just Alliance still maintains the lead. Next question. Which was the first Lions Club position held by former US President Jimmy Carter? Uh, unfortunately, uh, I just copied it from somewhere and this was not onto your uh, today's presentation. Uh, club president, Lions Tamer, director, or tail twister. Tail twister is the right answer. Um, the, when former president Jimmy Carter, Lion Jimmy Carter, I would say, when he, he returned back from his uh, service, Marine service to uh, Georgia, and he joined a uh, local Lions Club. He was a tail twister for three years.
just a lion has a streak of five correct answers. On the top, Cash, 14K, Ray, and RM are following the leader. Next question. When was Melvin Jones president of Lions Clubs International? 1917, red. 1925, blue. 1947, yellow. And he was never a president. 1917, 1925, 1947, and never a president. Yes, most of you are right. Melvin Jones was never a president. He always remained as a general secretary of our association, almost till uh, he passed away. The leaderboard, there is just a little bit of change, um, 14K, is moved up, cash moved down, but just a lion still remains as a leader. Next question and the last question, true or false? Jim Graver, a baseball coach, founded the first Leo club in 1957. True, blue, red, false. And I want, oh, all of, all of you answered and it's true. I was about to say that uh, Debbie must know this because it is from her multiple. So let's see the podium. On the podium, Ray is third. On the second, it is Debbie. And on the top, it is just a lion. We just need to know who is this just a lion and runner ups are RM and Mickey. So please let us know who the just, just a lion is so that uh, we can send a special pin for just a lion. Thank you so much for playing the, the trivia. And back to you, uh, Lion Anu. All right. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining, taking time from a uh, busy week, weekday. Uh, the next membership orientation for our multiple district will be held on Sunday, April 10th at noon Eastern. We are just trying to do different days, different times so that we can get uh, people to join in, people who can join during the weekdays. We are hoping to catch them on Sunday at noon. Uh, we did two sessions before, they were on different days of the week. So that's what we've been trying to do. Uh, thank you, PID Mel for your presentation, uh, for your time uh, for today and getting ready for the presentation. And thank you, PCC uh, Mahesh for another uh, session on code. If there are any follow-up questions, you can feel free to send them uh, to us and we will try to answer your questions. And Mahesh, will you be sending out the uh, PowerPoint to everybody? Okay, Mahesh says he will send, even though he's on mute. Yeah. So, yeah, I will uh, send. Yeah. All right. So, thank you, everyone, and have a good evening. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'm going to send you that treasures uh, program that I used also, so they can work that with their budget sure. stuff. Sounds good. Okay, I'll send that as soon as we close down. Sounds okay. good. I think we. Uh, Oh, we, we do have uh, uh, Diane.